So while Commander Ford is engaged in that sphere's activity uh, most of the day today, he'll also be doing some uh, prep work in order to get ready for uh, coming home a little bit later this week. Uh, aside from all of this experiment and maintenance activity, he was able to uh, take some time out of his day yesterday to uh, do a ham radio pass with uh, some students in a public school in Australia. Uh, why don't we take a listen uh, to that conversation from yesterday. Today we are acting from Italy as a celebrated station for Mount Owsley Public School in Ferry Meadow, Australia. Are you ready for the first question, Kevin? Over. I'm ready for the first question from Mount Owsley. Okay, okay, Kevin. Signal is go, go ahead, Australia, with first question. How does radiation affect you, and do you worry about radiation levels in the thin atmosphere? Over. Bruce, uh, I don't worry about them myself, but there are many engineers who watch the radiation level for us. We have on equipment on board that can warn us if we need to take shelter. We do have some special places we can go with some little extra protection in our crew quarters. We have to be careful, and we wear detectors on us uh, while we're in space. Great question. Over. The sounds sound different in space, both in the ISS and when on a spacewalk. Over. Well, it does sound a little different out here. Um, inside the space station, we can hear each other well when we're talking and we can listen to music. Uh, there is a lot of extra noise from fans and things, but uh, we always do have a background. When we're out on a spacewalk, we just wear headphones and all we can hear is a radio. It's like this one. Over. How do you store the oxygen needed for the astronaut, and do you have enough for extra months if needed? Yes, we do. We carry plenty so that we can last another year or so if we have tanks on the outside of the space station that hold reserve oxygen. So what we do inside is we, we rebreathe our oxygen. When we breathe it in or you use it, we rebreathe it back out as carbon dioxide. We have special machines to get the oxygen out of it so that we can breathe it again. Over. If, if someone gets ill, what sort of procedures do you have in place? If someone is critical, do you have the option to evacuate them back to Earth and would you deal the mission? Over. Oh, Riley, that's a really good question. We have good equipment, uh, like defibrillators and certain kinds of drugs that uh, are on board to help us. Like we could give an intraosseous a shot into the bone if we had to resuscitate somebody, maybe in cardiac arrest or got poisoned or something. We also could evacuate them on a Soyuz spacecraft that we came up here in if necessary. Over, but that would mean that a crew of three, at least three crew members, would all have to go home. Hopefully we would have other people on board. Over. Do you feel physically or mentally any different when you come back to Earth? Over. Yes, we do. In both cases, uh, we exercise a great deal up here, but when we come home, gravity is still going to be very heavy for me. Really hard for me to walk and to be around for a long time. My muscles will be sore and stiff, I think. Uh, I also have to recover my sense of balance. But uh, as for Bentley, I think it will just be uh, getting used to all the people again and wind and the weather because up here is a pretty sterile environment. Over. How do you know when it's not a day? Do you get a dead lag final feeling and does it affect your sleep? Over. Well, I have to say, I'm happy to say I don't get jet lag and it doesn't affect my sleep. But uh, whether it's night or day, we work on a 24-hour clock just like on Earth, and we use Greenwich Mean Time for our daily clock. So we wake up and we go to bed at the same time on our watches every day. But 16 times each day we see uh, light and dark. So if we look out the window, the sun rises and sun sets uh, 16 times every day. But uh, no problems with jet lag. Over. This is Sukhar asking Jackson question. How does the ISS generate and store electricity to power everything? Over. That's a great question. We use a lot of power on board, and we have very large solar arrays, solar panels that can uh, generate electricity for us. When we're in the sunlight uh, on our orbits, we can put it all into batteries and store it. 
so that when we're in the night time of our orbits, we can use it out of the batteries. So about every 90 minutes, they go through charging and discharging cycles. Inside, we always just see a good power supply. Over. What were your preparations for going to the ISS, and how long does it take to train for the mission? Over. For this particular flight, I had to train for about two and a half years, both in Russia, also in Germany, and also in Japan, and in Houston, Texas, for all the things I needed to do. So um, that's just for this mission. Before that, I had about two years of training just to be a good astronaut, to learn about astronomy and medical procedures and science. Over. Why is the work you do with the ISS important to mankind? Over. Well, because so many different kinds of fields of study uh, are influenced by Earth's gravity, the way things grow, the way metals solidify, and things like that, the way air moves, the way fire burns. It's all influenced by gravity on Earth. So be, to be able to come up here and study things without gravity, we can learn a tremendous amount that we didn't know before, and it will make a big difference here in those fields. Over. What do you miss most about home when you're in space? Over. Well, I do miss uh, all the people that I get to interact with every day, and also the food that we have on the planet Earth, and also just um, our way of life and being able to walk around, even though I like microgravity. I also like being able to walk around with my legs and have some Over. How do you read and write if things keep moving around? Over. Well, that's a good question. We have to stabilize ourselves. Right now when I'm talking to you, I've got my feet locked underneath a little rail on the floor so they don't float away. I have to be able to use my hands to type and write if I need. So I have to do it with my feet. Very special way. Over. Can you roll a dice so that it lands on a number or will it just float away? Over. Kevin Ford, please. 